welcome to the next video in the Voron series. In between the episodes, the E3D PT100 amplifier has arrived. And well, I tried my hardest to get this thing to work. But while trying to do so, I found out about something. The output that this amp generates is an analog output. And this amp, as you can see here, runs on 5 volt logic. Now the SKR boards are supposed to be 5 volt uh, tolerant, I think was the correct word for it. But yeah, I think that's they're only supposed to be tolerant for uh, it's only supposed to be tolerant for digital inputs, not analog output inputs. And on the analog inputs it only can work with 3.3 volts. And yeah, that basically means that this thing cannot work. I honestly didn't think it would be this confusing to get the uh, PT100s to work, but yeah. Uh, it, I spent a few days on this and yeah, I never, didn't get anywhere. But uh, it turns out I can make the Max AT1365 or whatever it was. Uh, board here that I have as I mentioned it in the episode before uh, It is a digital output board that needs an SPI bus and There wasn't any SPI outputs that I could figure out on this board other than the ones for the drivers and Yeah, I just used that as you can see I grabbed the SPI pins from the E1 motor dri driver part and yeah, routed it here and the other two are just power that I'm running from a, a limit switch and yeah, it looks like I finally managed to get this thing to work and as you can see, it is reading the temperature I feel like it's a bit higher than it actually is. I doubt it's 27 degrees in here, but whatever, it's close enough. We don't need that accurate of a reading, so yeah, it seems to work, which means we can finally move on and test the rest of the printer, get it working, and hopefully do some 3D printing in this episode as well, and maybe even get to modding it, but we will see what we can do once we get to it. Sorry for my voice right now, I'm a bit sick, but yeah, while editing this video, so far I had to cut a lot of footage because, well, it was taking way too long, so I decided to just record a segment explaining a few of the problems that I faced. First of all, there was a problem with the, uh, the motor that's connected to the X driver, whichever one it is, A or B, I'm not sure. And the problem with it, that was, you're seeing on the screen right now, it was vibrating a lot instead of actually turning. Uh, it took some time to figure it out, but it turns out there was a short somewhere to earth and that was causing it. And the next issue I faced was the Z limit switch. The nozzle is supposed to hit the Z limit switch and yeah to mount it in a place where the nozzle can hit it it needs to slide a decent amount forward on the uh, extrusions that the bed mounts to and the problem is the bed was way too close to the extrusions and it didn't allow it to be mounted and the solution was just raising the bed a bit and using longer screws etc and i got that working as well and now I'm facing another issue, but this one I'll explain to you right now. We have another problem, and this time it is with the probe. 
as you can see the probe looks triggered here and well it shouldn't be I also uh, tried lowering it to the bed and see if the signal was inverted or something that's not the case either so I don't know what's wrong with the probe but yeah there definitely is something going on As usual, I'm having more problems with the 3D printer. This time, it is this Fotec probe. I bought this from AliExpress, so I don't know if it's because this is a clone or something, or because it's just bad, I'm not sure, but... Yeah, the probe itself measures very inconsistently. Sometimes it triggers really high from the bed, sometimes it doesn't trigger at all, and causes a head crash. Happened once, unfortunately. But I don't think I bent the extrusion. I don't think because I think the firmware stopped. But yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, the measurements I'm getting from this are very inconsistent. It's basically to the point of being useless. But without a probe, I can't do the quad gantry leveling. So yeah, I'm kind of stuck. Now I do have two of these Omron probes that I bought for the uh, afterburner when I get to do the upgrade but unfortunately you can't mount these to the stock uh, carriage and to mount the Omron probe I have to get a new set of printed carriage parts at least the carriage frame and I decided to order from a local 3D printing company so here you can see the top two pieces are the, for mounting the Omron probe and um, they also had like a deal and they offered free shipping if I order a bit more so I decided to order the belt covers these are just cosmetic parts so the next two items are that the one after it's the Raspberry Pi mounting bracket with the heatsink if you remember I'm just using zip ties at the moment so this will allow me to mount it properly and the next two items are for mounting a Raspberry Pi and a Raspberry Pi camera and that will allow me to record time lapses as I did in the Black Widow back in the day I'll be able to do the same thing and lastly I ordered a nozzle scrubber mount I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it or not, but that allows me to use the brass wire brush, the one that I ordered from Triangle Lab and mounted to the 3D printer to clean the nozzle before printing. As I said, I'm not really sure if I'm going to use it or not, but yeah, it, it made sense because I had to go above a certain order price and well basically half of my total order comes from just those, the first two parts anyway the rest are just filler so yeah I ordered everything in black ABS and well today is the 28th of September September sorry February and yeah it should be here sometime in the mid next week I assume and hopefully it will be here in time for me to finish the video by the 6th, the Friday, because that's when I usually release these videos, but yeah, we will see. To make sure the video is ready for Friday, I had to act, uh, do the building quickly, which means I couldn't record everything, but the new printed parts have arrived, I mounted the new Omron probe to it, and then got it working right now what you're seeing is the calibration the quad gantry leveling there was was a slight problem one of the sides of the XY joints was sliding backwards when the gantry was moving and yeah I don't know what exactly caused it but it fixed itself basically so not that, that big of a problem now the print of the test cube is now done and I measured all of the sides and it seems to be basically perfectly calibrated out of the box. The default config file seems to do the job. I didn't need to adjust any of the steps. So 
directly from this I moved on to printing the skirts now you might already notice the crackling sound coming from this joint and yeah that thing I, I think I showed it in the episode before that it's already cracked and well it's much worse now so replacing that joint is definitely a priority but right now I think that will last me a few prints and the biggest priority right now for me is to get the skirts and you may say that those are just decorative parts why that's a priority but the thing is they're not just decorative they allow you to mount the fan and without a fan mount without these skirts I can't mount a fan which means I can't cool the electronics properly and I'm definitely not comfortable with that I just set this cooler master fan here just as a temporary measure but I doubt it's cooling it that well so yeah I definitely need a better solution and for that I need the bottom panel and for that I need the skirts basically that's what it comes down to right now I'm printing them in PLA and yeah I'll print the skirts out of PLA but when it comes to printing the joints I will go back to ABS because oh, that's the more suitable filament as far as basically everyone says on the discord so yeah that's the situation right now I'm recording this literally just before editing this I need to upload this video today so yeah I'm not going to be able to do much more so I think this video was shorter than usual but yeah I'm sorry about that but I think I made a decent amount of progress and I made get and I got this thing running so yeah I think there still was decent amount of progress and in the next episode I expect to mount the skirts I also there's another batch that I need to print which I sliced right here actually as you can see that also includes some SKR mounts with 40mm fans again, for cooling purposes. But yeah, I expect to mount them in the next episode. Also in the next episode I expect to be able to move into the actual enclosure for this, the cabinet. I need to do some wiring into that cabinet before moving it there, but yeah, it shouldn't take that much time. And yeah, we'll probably do some other stuff as well, probably get to modding it. I have a few things planned already, but yeah, I'm not going to get into that because it's getting long. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.